Well, I'm the only one who's ever had that secret fantasy of combating wolves from. I hope you enjoyed your on drive. And we are about to move on to the next smorgasbord of offerings from Roxbury School, aside from our musicians. And when I say Roxbury School, I mean everybody the pre prep, the prep, the senior school, and our welcome recent additions to the Roxbury Family Football uh, School as well. If you thought the last building was magnificent, and I certainly do, we must be uh, even more impressed with this. This is our grand old lady, Ralph Hall, built in 1928 and restored with enormous care uh, and attention to become a constable as you see it now. It is. It is so much more than a precious part of our heritage for me is a symbol of everything the school stands for, the, the marriage of the old and the new, this building, and then alongside it, we'll have a chance to see that later on this evening, the brand new music school, uh, the progressive married with the traditional, and, and surely these timbers that have stood for nearly a century have seeped into the, the words, the fine words that have been spoken from this stage and the wonderful performances, surely they are regular inside those beams. That's, that's certainly how I feel. Music has been part of our history for hundreds of years, and I have another quote for you, this time from the uh, 19, uh, sorry, 1893 Robbs Grovian, uh, where the author writes, A remarkable change has taken place during the last few years in the public opinion on the subject of music. It is no longer regarded as a kind of recreation unworthy of the attention of men inflicted by their talents and capabilities for higher things. You'll be pleased to know. Such a theory, which unhappily was once not at all uncommon, is fast becoming exploded. Music is already exalted into the rank of a science, and people are gradually beginning to see what an important part it plays in education and never a true word spoken. It is central to who we are, and it has been for so many years. In fact, the lovely story is that when Ralph Hall was opened the first time in 1928, the greatest, well, I dare I say, the greatest English composer, Edward Algar, was invited to attend. He wrote uh, and expressed his uh, apologies and said he would be unable to do so. Nevertheless, the opening went ahead, and in fact, it was Lord Cobham's uh, grandfather who officiated at those proceedings. But halfway through that uh, concert, a shadowy figure snuck into the back of the mezzanine, none other than the great Algar himself. Uh, and he heard our people play one of his pieces, King Olaf. Uh, and, and sometime later, our music master of the time, Isaiah Bernal, who is uh, well known in this school, wrote a very groveling letter to him, to the great man, apologizing for how poorly we apparently played this piece. <laughs> uh, we are unable, of course, to resurrect Algar, but we have the next best thing this evening. Uh, we have a Royal Fellow of the College of Music conducted in 1994, and probably even more importantly, uh, the, a past president of the Algar Society. His induction as a Royal Fellow was due to his lifelong love and passion of Algar. He is, of course, also one of the world's finest classical musicians, amongst the, a very small handful of the greatest uh, cellists we have known. It is also a great pleasure to welcome a neighbour, a uh, near and revered neighbour, the uh, current principal of Birmingham, in fact, now the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire, please welcome to open our Ralph Constable this evening, <coughs> Professor Julian Lloyd Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, maybe I'm not sure we're going to add much to uh, the um, many great words that have apparently been said on this stage. It's already pretty be on edge. Um, but I just say I'm really honored to be here and to be asked to do this um, tonight. I'm Bronze Grove is actually an important place in my life. I mean that. Um, I've played here many, many times. Uh, one of the first concerts I did when I was still at college um, was at the festival in Bronze Grove in 1970. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've played here many, many times since. Uh, so it's um, a really important place. Of course, you can't do that without concert venues. And I think um, Bronze Grove has a fantastic tradition of supporting the arts particularly music, as far as I know. I've also played many times at the Art Trips. Um, the festival is great. There's a concert club. There's an international uh, music competition. I don't want to leave things out, but there are just so, so many things. And I think it all points to the fact that the West Midlands as a region, we are really ahead of the game. We really are. Um, this is the sixth new concert hall I've opened in less than six weeks. <laughs> At the uh, Royal Birmingham Conservatoire, as we now are, since September 25th, which is when we reopened our magnificent new building, and we're already working on getting a huge um, contingent from, from Bronze Grove to come and visit us. Um, we've got five performing spaces. So, really, this is literally the sixth hall. We are way ahead of the game. We all know about Symphony Hall, Town Hall, we are so ahead. London should be very jealous. <laughs> um, so, uh, what else can I say about tonight? I, it's, it, except that it's a celebration of the culture. And I think that is why the school have done such a fantastic thing. It always seems to be so easy to find reasons not to invest in culture, but Bromsburg School have really done that um, in a fantastic way. And I'm sure that you will read the rewards. But why is it important to invest in culture? Because culture is something that may be the one thing that most brings people together. And we really need that now. So congratulations to everybody involved with this fantastic achievement. And uh, I can't wait to share students who have them coming here and that kind of thing that you must come and see. So, but tonight it's all about this hall and the theatre. What a wonderful thing. Thank you so much for asking me to.
while we're at it, humility is a value that I hold dear, and I have an annoying habit of insisting that we not celebrate staff at pupil. Uh, they're saying they were done with courses and performances like this, and there are other times for that, but I'm going to break my own rule and advice. Our director of music, Mr. Jacob McCalvey, and our director of performing arts, Mr. Tim Gort, to stand and take a bow that they most richly deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, you have seen 208 young Bronze Rover and Woodfold performers this evening. That is just the start. My mission is to ensure that every single child in the school treats these boards or those in common in their time in this place. I hope, therefore, that the taster has simply served to whet your appetite. If it has, there is plenty more to come, I promise you, in the years and months to come. Uh, we do have another drink for you to finish the evening off, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to invite someone to close proceedings. I should say, when you do go and have a drink, and please stay and, and mix and mingle, uh, take note of the uh, art exhibition that you may have noticed on your way in. Uh, I can't bear to see wonderful timbers go to waste, so when there was a bit of demolition work going on in Ralph, we salvaged uh, the uh, boards and beams that were pulled out, including some beautiful oak that used to uh, comprise the balcony bounces up the back, and students and staff have crafted artworks and Ralph reimagined, so please take some time to enjoy that. But before I do that, I have to uh, one final vote of thanks, and that is to all the governors who have given their enormous support uh, to the executive over many, many years as we work towards the building of these performing arts facilities. There is one man in particular, though, for whom this is a very special night, retiring uh, president, not retiring just yet, but he will shortly be retiring president of the school, Dr. Vivian Anthony, has a huge heart for performing arts and music in particular. His vision, more than any other, has driven us to the place we're at. Uh, today, and I invite him to close the proceedings, Dr. Anthony. Departments within the humanities and the sciences operating in new buildings and winning accolades of excellence from inspectors. That is what superb new facilities can do in the hands of outstanding teachers, and that is what we hope for our music and drama at Bromsville. I asked James McKelvey, our director of music, to send me a few thoughts appropriate to the occasion. He expressed excitement at working in such a fabulous new space 
and a neighbor from music school. Being literally on Gordon Green, it says, alongside other historic buildings and clearly visible and audible from many other parts of the senior school, the site is a boom. As pupils walk to science, or the school shop, or the dining hall, or to chapel, they can't help but notice this most historic of our buildings, now modernized with a wow factor. Everyone has access to it from the earliest years of the prep school to the oldest in the senior school. Hundreds of senior school pupils come in weekly for lectures. The Thespian colleagues we've already seen are enjoying Cobham Hall just as much, and how admirable that Lord Cobham should open today the hall that bears his name. James tells me uh, a story that you've heard from the headmaster already about Edward Elgar uh, appearing rather late for the opening in 1928 and how the director of music at that time had to write to apologise for the wrong notes in Elgar's King Over. Well, I can be sure, and I know you are, that there were no wrong notes in there, so the director of music you have to write to your Mr. Knight. <laughs> A wonderful performance by all. <laughs> Professor Lloyd Webber has honoured us by opening the new route of music school today. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we were all have noticed is how wonderful, how marvellous the acoustics are in this building, and how comfortable the seats are. But just without leaving the acoustics, I think the brass players and the drummers must have thought they were in heaven today. That was a magnificent sound coming from all around, from the brass particularly. In the past, music may have been a Cinderella to some of the outstanding activities celebrated at the Bromsburg. Now, the Prince has come and established Cinderella in a magnificent palace. In the past, as in the present, there have been outstanding individual music students at the school, some going on to further study at music colleges or universities. Our concert today was not about individual stars. The whole purpose was to demonstrate quality collective music making from all ages, schools and backgrounds, and weren't they outstanding? Well done all of you. My further hope is that many more with first-rate musical potential from our various day and boarding constituencies will be queuing up to win places or perhaps scholarships or bursaries in what will soon become the finest of schools for those wanting to perform and study music within a broad educational environment. It's my pleasant duty now to invite you to make your way you know, to the President's Champagne Reception. I hope I'm not paying. <laughs> <laughs> in both lower and upper foyers of the music school and to take in the rather reimagined art exhibition. But now I ask you to join me in congratulating all of our young performers today and all those responsible for producing these magnificent performing art buildings which make Bronze Home so rightly proud.